Welcome to For Fox Sake, where we give zero fucks about money shame and talk about real life and finance, including the taboo behind it all. So grab your Monday morning caffeine and let's chat. Good morning, Fox Den. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday morning as per usual. This episode will be one of our more actionable or tip-based episodes. And if you like it, please give us a five-star review and tell Apple or Spotify just how much you like it. I would really appreciate it. It truly helps us grow as a podcast. And my arbitrary goal is to get to 100 reviews and we have 84, I believe, so far. So that would be a great help. Um, This episode is actually inspired by one of my coaching clients. They asked me about impulse spending and how they could cut back and or mitigate it from their life. I thought it was a great question and I wanted to bring my suggestions to everybody. I've also thought about a few more since our last call. So I thought just put it into a podcast episode. Why not? There's a reason I say mitigating and not stopping or cutting because it's pretty normal to impulse spend. What I mean by that is from birth till death, we are inundated with marketing and ads and buy, 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 consume, consume, consume. And we can obviously mitigate that and cut back on that. But it's normal to buy things that we don't plan for. It's just kind of a side effect of living in a capitalist society. I don't think there should be any shame around it. I don't think there should be any embarrassment around it. I do it. Whoever is listening to this probably does it. But it can definitely affect a budget and your financial goals. So the point is to accept that this happens, but also put barriers up to protect ourselves so it doesn't happen too much. So here are 10 tips you can use to mitigate impulse shopping. And some of these are a little unorthodox. So, you know, I'm not suggesting you go out and do all of these. Just adopt what you think will work for you. Try some on for yourself and see if it, you know, helps you mitigate impulse shopping. So the first thing and the easiest is to take off autofill from your computer and delete all of the payment methods off of every site and the entire computer. So make it harder for yourself to thoughtlessly spend money online. I mean, we we all get ads from TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and, you know, Shein and Amazon and all of these things. And their goal, the, the retailer goal, the marketer goal, is to make it as easy as possible for you to get to check out. So what you want to do is put barriers in front of yourself to make that harder. If you really, really want to spend money and you see something that you just have to have, you physically have to punch in your credit card numbers. So that gives you a few moments to really consider, do I need this? Do I want this? Or is this an impulse buy? Second thing is budget for your impulse spending. Have a sinking fund for it. Uh, This takes away from the impulse part of it, you know, budget it alongside your self-care or your shopping category. And you can use Roundup tools to get extra spending money for the month. So I have an Ally account. And when I spend money from my Ally checking account, let's say I spend $4.50, 50 will be rounded up, quote unquote, to my savings account. So they'll transfer that 50 cents to my savings account. You can use your Roundup money for impulse spending. Super easy. But by budgeting for your impulse spending, you can take the guilt out of it. You can buy things using that sinking fund and you don't have to, you know, get to the end of the month and you're like, where the hell did all this money go? You have a sinking fund that you put money in and you buy things with. I think that's a really great way to mitigate just this shopping impulse. Number three is enact a waiting period. Uh, One of my good friends, Lexa from the Avocado Toast Budget, She puts in a 24 hour waiting period for her Amazon cart. And I thought that was just genius. And she always ends up not spending nearly what she was going to spend if she had just clicked purchase. So enact a waiting period, 24 hours, two days a week, whatever, you know, makes you comfy so that you don't just buy immediately. The next tip 
is avoid stores. And if you can't avoid stores, visit cheaper alternatives. When I was paying off my debt for the first time, I did not shop at Target. I did not physically go into a Target. I did not visit Target.com for one year. Was it hard? Yes, it was so hard. (laughs) But I knew that if I went in there and if I went to the website, I was going to spend money and I just didn't have that money allocated for any impulse shopping at the time. So I just took the entire retailer out of the equation. I told myself, I am not going to do that. Now, I understand that takes a level of self-control that some people just don't have. I'm honestly shocked and in awe that I had it. But if you if you need to go to a store, do the Target dollar section, do the Michaels dollar section, do the Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Will these things hold up over time? Probably not, but it will scratch that itch that you have to buy something. And sometimes we just want to buy something for that dopamine hit. I can completely relate to that. Last month, Joe and I went to Five Below and bought like $50 worth of shit. And it just felt good. And I'm not saying that you should do that all the time. But what I'm saying is, instead of dropping $200 at, you know, wherever, you can buy $50 worth of stuff and feel good about that. And it was stuff that we were going to use. And it fell apart pretty quickly. (laughs) But it scratched that itch. So if you can't just avoid shopping, period, try to do a cheaper alternative so it hits your bank account in a less intrusive way. Hey, Fox Den, V here with an exciting update. My one-on-one financial coaching program has been overhauled. Now, I offer three packages, each designed to help you manage your money more effectively and feel more confident with budgeting and personal finance. Do you need immediate support and direction or just a second set of eyes on what you've got going on? The one month triage package is for you. Do you need a crash course in tracking your spending, budgeting and creating a realistic plan? The three month progress package is for you. Do you need a finance friend, confidant and guide for a long-term debt payoff and financial habit change? The six month success package is for you. If you are interested in my one-on-one financial coaching program, visit vfrugalfox.com slash coaching or click the link in the episode show notes. That's V-V-E-E frugalfox.com slash coaching. Now let's get back to the episode. The next tip is put a rubber band on your credit card. By doing this, you have to physically remove the rubber bands from the plastic card giving you more time to think on if you really want that item or if you're just shopping with your emotions or, you know, your impulse shopping. Is this a little unorthodox? Yes, but it has worked. (laughs) Put it on your debit cards, on your credit cards, and it takes a hot second for you to get it out of there. And by the time you do that, you're either really frustrated that you're actually having to do this because of your impulse shopping or you really need the object and you'll get it. My next piece of advice is to use curbside pickup for groceries. The grocery store isn't a safe place either. And unless you're getting your food from the forest, you have to frequent them. So if the impulse category is a trigger waiting to happen in aisle two, you can order your food online and pick it up curbside. This completely gets rid of any impulse shopping that you could do, and it saves people a ton of money. My next tip is pretty easy. Unsubscribe from promotional emails using unroll.me. These companies email you for a reason. It's because people click on them and spend money. (laughs) So the best way to avoid this is to unsubscribe from them completely. You can do this in bulk using unroll.me, which I'll put in the show notes, or unsubscribing from them one by one as they come in. Obviously, that takes more time, but you're not giving up your data to, you know, companies with unroll.me. I've done both and it it does take a while, but it will eventually end. You will eventually have quiet in your inbox. My next tip is put an ad blocker on your computer. If you're tempted by other ads, consider doing this on your computer. It's also nice because it makes being online less annoying with without all the marketing. My next one is stick to cash for your shopping slash self-care category. This is honestly probably my least favorite tip because I'm personally just not a fan of cash spending. I like swiping my debit card because I like the data and spreadsheets and the electronic tracking. But if you find the only way you're going to stay in budget is by enacting a physical cash only budget for specific items like shopping, just 
do it. And then lastly, remember, you probably don't really need that thing off of Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Snapchat, X, TikTok, Shop, Threads, Amazon, Shein, Timu, whatever. You probably don't need it. And I know that kind of contradicts what I said of like, oh, sometimes you just need to buy something. But you you probably don't need whatever you're buying impulsively. I think it's really important to remember the why behind why we're spending and why we're impulse shopping. And I like to mitigate impulse shopping, but I also want you to understand that it is a pretty natural thing to do in our current society. But do you need these things? No, you don't. All right. <laughs> so that was the episode. I hope that, um, you know, you can use some of these tips to better your spending habits. Like I said, there is just no shame here. I don't have any time for that shit. So, you know, if you do end up, quote unquote, slipping, it's OK. Another great tip is you can return items. If you leave the store and a day later, you're like, why the fuck did I do that? Just go back and, and return it. It's OK. It's all right. No one's going to, you know, meet you with like binoculars and be like, why? What are you doing? Why are you doing that? You made a mistake. No one's going to be like that. I'm really excited for the next month and a half of podcast episodes on Earth Day. We are having Angela and Regina from Women's Personal Finance join us to talk about sustainable budgeting and Angela's clothes buying ban. I am pretty pumped about that. And then in all of May, we are doing a May is Mental Health Month series. So we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship and chronic illness. We're going to be talking about financial therapy and financial trauma. Um, we're going to be getting some actionable tips if you can't afford therapy. I am so excited about this series because I think it will be super impactful and helpful for those listening. So yeah, that's the podcast uh, up until June, which is, you know, pride. <laughs> so I'll probably have a few guests for that as well since i love pride month all right so if you loved this episode just a reminder again please give us a review share it with a loved one and i will see you guys next monday all right toodaloo thanks for listening to this week's episode of for fox sake if you want more content like this follow me on instagram tiktok and threads at v frugal fox and don't be a stranger i respond to followers and love feedback for my community if you want to make my day and help this podcast reach more people, please consider giving a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. A special thanks to Kaylee Johnson, Heather Devoki, and Joseph Bogomel. See you next week. And remember, do it with an open heart and no attachment to the result.